Top to bottom, starting at the handle, okay? Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey guys, we're at Reed's and we are sampling the cider and the wine. What do you think? Good. Good? Plus it's really pretty here. And it's pretty here. So from left to right, I have the Harvest Pumpkin Cider, followed by an Apple Grape Cider, which has a sweet Concord Grape finish. Then there is a sweet scarlet cider. This is a farmhouse blend of semi-sweet apple cider infused with black currants. Then their pear bear cider, another semi-dry 100% pear cider. And the last two is, or they are both very interesting. The first is a JD. This is aged one year in a Jack Daniels barrel. And this is a dry cider crisp with a pleasant whiskey finish and finally their grizzly which is a dry cider made with 100% smokehouse apples with a crisp and refreshing green apple finish and what are you drinking over there <laughs> chardonnay very oaky pinot grigio vidal i haven't tried that one yet. you haven't tried that one not yet. a huge fan of that that's really good take a sip of the vidal and let me know what you think Good. It's very dry. Very dry. This is my favorite. That's your favorite. And which one is that? Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Someone who knows a little bit about wines. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't. I don't know anything except if it tastes good or if not. If it tastes good or not. Hey guys, we're done at Reed's Tap Room and Cider House. I got myself some pumpkin cider to go. So if you get a chance and you're in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, stop by. Right on Baltimore Street. Good times, good fun. Did you like it? I did. I'm trying to see how we buy that house next door. Oh. Oh, it's an office. It's an office. That's why uh, I couldn't find it. Well, this place is really cool. So, onward. This is some of the best onion soup I've ever had in my life. I've been to the Springhouse Tavern before, so I'm about to knock this off. And uh, with a little help from the rum belly, this was a favorite drink of Benjamin Franklin, or so the story goes. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. The spring. The original spring. Yeah. Refrigerator um, for perishable foods. I should explain something. I mean, the first thought of the pioneer home and building a home <laughs> was the uh, ability of an adequate water supply. And like other settlers, the Dobbin family built the house 
over a spring for convenience, and in order to be assured of water in the event of an Indian attack, Miss Dobbin used the stairway to the spring often. Besides providing cool, clear water, it served as a refrigerator for perishable foods. Pretty cool. More from the Dobbin House. I am glad to share with you in anything that will promote your enjoyment, Reverend Dobbin. And there's a museum upstairs. So we were in the Springhouse Tavern in the basement. We're going to travel up to the museum and see what it has to offer. Apparently it was a slave hideout as well. Isn't this place cool up here? Question. These look like original slave manifests. Because look at these are the pictures of when it was, I guess, bought and restored, and it was in disarray, it looks like. Hmm. Here's his uh, inventory of things that he owned when he died 21 geese, 2 pigs, 3 yearlings, 2 spades, a shovel. And a negro, what is this? negro Becky, which would have been a black slave. Two hatchets. This is what he owned while upon so he was his a death. Slave owner mm -hmm. That also was part of the Underground Railroad. I suppose. Died of tuberculosis. A large pot. His estate was valued at nine hundred dollars when he died. It's very sad that people are valued along with possessions. An old Bible and a psalm book. It doesn't seem like he had that much, though. Well, people wouldn't have back then. They'd probably think that we're horrible with the amount of garbage we have these days. Here's another one, another slave named Let. Thank you. 